Assalamu alaikum, it's your Dr. Ness and we are here a very important topic of cardiology. You know that right heart cath and JVP is nothing but the crux of cardiology. If you know how to do the right heart cath, when to do and why to do the right heart cath, how to interpret the right heart cath because right heart cath is, cath is the like the major and the major uh, portion for adult cardiology as well as for the adult congenital heart diseases as well as for the Peds cardiology, pediatric, uh, Peds cardiology. And uh, obviously when you discuss about the right heart cath and you will not discuss about the JVP then your topic obviously won't be completed without discussion of the JVP. So uh, we will just uh, cover the waves of JVP here. Okay, first of all what, uh, what are the indications of right heart cat you know that the formal things comes first so we have to discuss about the indications you know there's a cardiac surgery in the cardiac surgery you need to evaluate the pressures of the across the chambers in the chambers in the in your across the valves and pressure gradients across the valve so uh, cardiac surgery is one of the indication or before going towards the cardiac surgery you need to uh, discuss or calculate the uh, cardiac output pvr svr and so all these things so before for, for all these things you need to do the right heart cath or the invasive monitoring or invasive hemodynamic monitoring of the right heart heart failure there was a trial on the heart in the uh, which is written in the topol as well as the escape trial in which they uh, they uh, like uh, observe the two arms in which in one arm there was there was done the invasive monitoring with the uh, pulmonary which uh, catheter and uh, and the second was not done with the invasive monitoring so the both the escape trial showed that there is no mortality benefit over the invasive monitoring if you are doing the invasive monitoring the heart failure so it is that's why it is not indicated that you uh, it, it, there is no need to do the invasive monitoring in the patient of the every every heart failure patient yes but if your patient is with the diastolic dysfunction and you are confused with that it is, is it a diastolic dysfunction is a restrictive cardiomyopathy or it is something else then yes obviously you need to do the right heart care then pulmonary hypertension very important very important very important is that what pulmonary hypertension is a bigger term then what which type of the pulmonary hypertension is is it is it a pulmonary artery hypertension is it a pulmonary venous hypertension is it a pulmonary uh, mixed pulmonary venous artery hypertension so it is very 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 important that you need to discuss about that uh, for uh, for all these uh, confusions and for uh, and to clear all these confusion you need to do the right heart care and adult congenital heart disease obviously for especially for the shunts if you want to close the shunt and you are like a bit confused and you just want to calculate the PVR and the SVR because you know that if the SVR if the if the if the PVR uh, would be more than one third of the SVR and if the pulmonary hypertension would be more than the, uh, fifty percent of the systemic hypertension then the indication of the closure of that shunt become become to B okay if these both things are not there then it would be class 1 indication so it is very uh, important sometimes to do the right heart cat especially in the adult congenital heart disease so most of the time adult uh, peds cardiology people uh, you know, do all these things am i yes in the if your if your patient is coming with the cardiac shock and the mixed type of the shock as well and you, you are suspecting that your patient has not this uh, shock because of the MI and you are suspecting something like pulmonary embolism and you are you and if you are suspecting something like septic shock then you need to do the what invasive monitoring then you do need to do this right heart care so obviously now uh, what are the uses the uh, uses is the assessment of the volume status and uh, we will discuss later on that how we would assess that there the vo volume status is raised or not so uh, just be focused here right now that uh, just keep remember the names of indication the uses and then we will discuss in the uh, later on that how we, we we would assess the volume status with the right heart cat and the difference between the shocks is uh, I, I told earlier that if you want to differentiate between this various type of the shock you need to do this right heart cat now risk stratification is very important that 
what is the contractility, what is the cardiac output, what is the ejection friction. You can do all these things with the invasive monitoring. You can do all these, not with the right heart care, if I am talking about the uh, left heart cardiac output and the ejection friction of the left heart, then obviously, now, right now, I am discussing about the ejection friction of the right heart and the cardiac output of the right heart. So, for all these things, you need to do this uh, invasive monitoring or the invasive hemodynamic monitoring is the right heart care. And the how to difference, uh, differentiate between the constrictive pericarditis and the restrictive pericarditis again you need to do this and we will discuss later on in constrictive versus restrictive topic as well and here as well so the difference between ARDS and the heart failure and we are a bit confused that patient has a low ejection fraction and has the symptoms of RDS and you are suspecting that patient the patient has a raised pulmonary pressure or this patient has a sort of the uh, ARDS or this patient has a sort of the pneumonia then you, you, you have to do the invasive monitoring. So severe pulmonary hypertension again as I discussed earlier you are in cardiac shunt as I discussed earlier. Now the important thing is not this. That the complications, you know that these are the very simpler things of bleeding, pneumothorax, and there's no uh, nerve injury, ear embolism, and uh, and this rupture, perforation, thrombosis, catheter thrombosis, thrombophilobitis, infection, all these things. These are the bit very, 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 very like uh, things to cram. But the important things to understand is that how to do right heart care. What is right heart care? So right heart care is obviously you have to put the catheter in the right heart. And if you are coming from the upper approach, if like you are doing the subclavian or you are doing the um, axillary or you are do doing the brachiocephalic or you are doing the external jugular. So obviously your catheter will approach the heart from the superior vena cava. And if you are coming from the femoral vein, so your catheter come in the heart or approach the heart from the inferior vena cava. So you have to understand that the tip of the catheter is very, very sensible and having the sensor of for the, the like uh, pressure sensitive. So it, it, it calculates the pressure. You know that the pressure in the all venous system in our body is actually the pressure of the RE or it is surrogate of the RE. Same is the pressure in the our all arteries is the surrogate of the LV. That's why in the all arteries of your body having the pressure of around 120 systolic and 80 diastolic. Same as here, you, you, usually we do not have like the major difference between the systole and the artery with the venous system because your all venous system is connected with the eye. Okay, right atrium through two major uh, uh, big vessels which are the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava comes from the lower body, takes all the blood from the lower body and drains into the RA and superior vena cava, vena cava uh, drains into the RA and gets or drains the blood of the your upper portion of the upper peripheries and the head and neck. Now the important thing here is that the, what is the native pressure of the RA? What are the normal pressure of the RA? The, the normal pressure of the RA in systole or the diastole, you know that the, there is nothing to do with the RA. RA is atrias and atrias always, always fills into the systole and they contracts into the diastole. So there is a not a major difference of the pressures in the, uh, in the usually in the uh, atrias, either left or uh, uh, right. But obviously there is a m less pressure that the, the chamber which has the least pressure among all is RA. Okay, and the chamber which has the highest pressure among all is LV. And the, pre and the atria which has the more pressure than other is LA. LA has a more pressure than the RA. And if you are talking about the ventricles or the LV, left ventricle has the more pressures than the RV. Now the important thing is here we have that the in RA usually you have 5 to 8 or not more than 8 millimeter mercury of the pressure and if there would be the pressures increase in the RA so you can get the pressures in RA would be higher. That would not be 5 or less than 5 but it would be more than 5 so you can easily get if you if you like uh, put the catheter into RA and you get the pressures of more than 5 then your minds pop up and or there's, there uh, should be some uh, like uh, hint in your mind that there's something going wrong in the RA or it, it may be there's something going wrong with anything else which is increasing the pressure of RA. Okay, so there should be just keep yourself clear that the pressure should be less than 5 or 5 to 8 or it should not be more than 8. 
Now, if you goes down, then you will get the pressures of RV. If you if you if you comes here, you can get the pressure of RA, and if you goes down, you you get the pressures of what? RV. Okay. So if you get the pressures of RV, then you should be very clear about it that the systolic pressure of the RV should not be more than 15 to 30. So RV has capability to generate the pressures of 50 to 30 systolic, not more than it. And the diastolic pressure of the RV and as well as the RA would be same. So you should be very clear because in the diastole this valve would remain open. So the pressure of the RA and the RV in diastole should remain same. If it is not same in the diastole, it means there is a gradient between RA and the RV and it means that there is some stenosis at the at the tricuspid valve. Okay, so this is how we interpret the right heart care. So the important thing is that that the diastolic pressure of the RV are the surrogate of the RA. Got it? Now the important thing is that if you forward or advance your catheter in the pulmonary artery, so you will get the pressure of mean pulmonary artery. Okay, mean pulmonary artery. So in the mean, uh, in the, so sorry, not in the mean, in the main pulmonary artery. So in the main pulmonary artery, you will get the pressures of systolic around 50 to 30. Why? Because in the systole, if RV is generating the pressures of 50, 30, and this is the pressure which is transmitting towards the pulmonary artery. That's why the pressures of the pulmonary artery should not be more than 15 to 30. And there should not be more diastolic pressure more than 8 to 12. Why? Because the diastolic pressure of RV, diastolic pressure of RA and the diastolic pressure of the mean pulmonary artery should remain same. Should remain same. Why? And if there is any stenosis here, so obviously RV would generate more pressure and that pressure would not be transmitting to here in the main pulmonary artery. Then the main pulmonary artery pressure would be lesser and the RV pressure would be more or so uh, through it you will be uh, like having the hint or you will interpret it as a, that there is some stenosis across the pulmonary valve across the infundibulum of the pulmonary vein or oh, sorry pulmonary artery uh, so that's why it is causing the gradient between rv and main pulmonary artery so it means that there is some stenosis at the rv uh, uh, at the pulmonary valve between the rv and the main pulmonary artery and mean should not be more than mean should not be more than 80 to oh sorry 8 to 20 so if I would ask you the definition of the pulmonary hypertension, so any pressure which raised more than 25 millimeter mercury, okay, uh, in the main pulmonary artery uh, is, is, is the definition of pulmonary, uh, pulmonary hypertension. And we will discuss it about in the, in the lecture of pulmonary hypertension that how would we further differentiate it, uh, what are the types, what are the classes, what are all these things. So you can... Uh, watch my lecture on the pulmonary hypertension as well. Now the important thing is that what is what is pulmonary capillary wage pressure and what is the PVR? So the PVR, first of all, what is the pulmonary capillary wage pressure? So if you advance your catheter here in the pulmonary capillaries and you just wage it, you just wage it like you wage it or you inflate the balloon here, not here but here and you just wage it so it means you are disconnecting it with the RV and the main pulmonary artery. So you will get the cap pressures of pulmonary capillary wage pressure. So this is the pulmonary capillary wage pressure always should be 6 to 12. <coughs> if it is increased, if it is pulmonary capillary wage pressure is increased, it means that there is a problem with left heart. Why? Because pulmonary capillary wage pressure is the indirect surrogate of LA. The pressure of LA is 6 to 8, then the, your pulmonary capillary wage pressure would be 6 to 8. If the pulmonary capillary, if the LA pressures are increased for any left heart problem such as heart failure, such as diastolic dysfunction, such as 
uh, mitral stenosis such as mitral regurgitation then the LA pressure would be higher and simultaneously the pulmonary capillary wage pressure will be higher so you will get the hint that if your pulmonary capillary pressure is rise or uh, like like it's it uh, 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 they are not in the normal range and it is it, it and, and 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 they are raised so you will get the hint that there is some problem with the LA because in the right heart care pulmonary capillary wage pressure is indirect surrogate of the LA pressures and the important thing is that that in diastole the pulmonary capillary wage pressure indirectly surrogate the pressure the uh, the pulmonary capillary wage pressure indirectly surrogate the pressures of the LA and in, di in, in diastole because in diastole the mitral valve opens and it transmits the pressure from LA to LV so pulmonary capillary wage pressure in diastole in ventricular diastole also surrogates the pressures of <coughs> LV if there is no mitral stenosis no mitral regurgitation or no mitral disease uh, mitral valve disease so it surrogates the pressures of the uh, your your ventricular diastole as well so pulmonary capillary wage pressure is that important and the pulmonary capillary wage pressure is that pressure which actually differentiate your pulmonary hypertension from pulmonary artery hypertension and the pulmonary venous hypertension. In pulmonary venous hypertension, there would be the more pulmonary capillary wage pressure and the pulmonary artery hypertension, their pulmonary capillary wage pressure would be in the normal range. So that is what important. Then what? Then you always need to uh, like read in your books that PVR, SVR, PVR, SVR. What is PVR? It is pulmonary vascular resistance. It is the resistance exerted by the pulmonary vasculature. <coughs> so how would you calculate the pulmonary vascular resistance? Because it is not the direct pressure which you calculate through the catheter like the RA pressure, RV pressure, pulmonary artery pressure and the pulmonary capillary wage pressure. But this is the resistance, this is the pressure, this is uh, the, the value which you have to calculate through uh, equation. What is the equation? In this equation is that pulmonary, pulmonary artery pressure minus pulmonary capillary wage pressure multiplied by 80 and divided by the cardiac output. So if you are dividing it with the cardiac output, then you will get what? You will get the PVR and PVR should be normal if it is in the range of 20 to 120 dimes. And 20 to 120 dimes. So the now, now the important thing us to that we should be very much familiar that if we are doing the right art care and if we are interpreting the right art care, what is to interpret it, how to interpret it. In all the right art or the left art care, you will always get the two things. Number one, pressure or number two, three things actually. If you are getting the oximetry or the table of values, then it means you are getting the two things here. What one is the pressure, pressure value across the different chambers or at the different locations and number two is the oximetry oximetry is what through that catheter you can you can draw the blood as well so if you are drawing the blood here from ra so that would be the oximetry of ra if you are drawing the blood from the rv so that would be the oximetry of the rv and if you are getting the blood or drawing the blood from the pulmonary artery so it means you are getting the blood from the or the oximetry from the pulmonary artery. Same as in the left heart cath, if you are getting the pressure pressing of LV, uh, so it means that you are <coughs> getting the pressure of LV. Number two thing, number third thing, two are the, that the pressure values and the oximetry. Number third is the dressings. Usually they give you the dressings and they ask you about the abnormality. We will discuss this all dressings in another lecture. Here we are just focusing to the right heart care and in right heart care, the dressing would be JVP. What is JVP? JVP is nothing but the indirect surrogate of RA pressures, which you look on the JVP waves while uh, looking through your naked eyes, okay, in the at the, at the level of 
jugular venous pressure we will take a separate lecture that how to calculate the jvp how to see the how to measure the jvp and what are uh, 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 its pros uh, 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 merits and the d merits but here i am just focusing that the jvp has the same waves in the ra or as la okay if if we are talking about right art cath it means we are talking about like these waves in the right heart if we, if our catheter is placed here here so if you place your catheter here you will get the waves like this the a wave the x descent c wave and x not descent uh, x prime descent and the v wave and the and the y descent but if you advance your catheter here and if you are getting this the same wave so these waves as i told you that the pulmonary capillary wave pressure is the surrogate of the la so it means that you are getting these venous waves or the venous pressing of la not ra because in ra if you are getting these waves by placing the catheter as ra so it means that these waves are this uh, uh, showing the venous waves of RA and but if you if you advance your catheter in the pulmonary capillary wave pressure and you are getting these tracings it means that you are getting the tracings from LA not RA so that is the difference between the tracing and the tracings remain same the waves remain same because these waves are the venous waves these waves are the venous waves and the blood which is coming or oh, that, that blood is actually oxygenated blood which is coming in the la but you will get the waves of all these types on the pulmonary capillary wave pressure tracing and it means that these tracings are the indirect tracings of la got it now the important thing is that what is the a wave what does it show what is the c wave what does it mean what is the x descent and what are all these things okay so we have three waves a c and v and we have a two descents x and the y descents these are the very important thing and the and 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 sometimes they actually help you to diagnose the various abnormalities and the various diseases how now come to the point that the when your atria contracts in the late diastole when atria in the end diastole when atria contracts and empties its blood into the rv it gives a wave and we name that wave is a and if there is a problem and if there is a problem which causing the delayed emptying of a or increase contraction of the a so there would be abnormality with the a got it then there would be the abnormality would be, it would be with the a and we will discuss it later on same is x what x shows x descent shows when atria contracts it gives a wave it 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 gives when atria contracts here it gives a wave on jvp because here is the external or uh, internal jugular vein which is the indirect surrogate of ra and why why do we not use the external jugular vein uh, for the jvp because uh, because that external jugular vein is not the in the direct connection with the ra the internal jugular vein is the only vein which has the direct connection with the ra that's why we use the, this this internal jugular vein as a as a surrogate of ra pressure or as the indicator of the ra waves so when atria contracts and it gives a wave called is a wave it is because of the atrial contraction in the leg diastole and if there would be the tricuspid stenosis it will give what it will give the more larger a wave why larger a wave because the blood is not going downward but it is just giving or making a a wave okay so same here x shows the atrial relaxation <clears throat> if there would be a extensive atrial relaxation because of any rv problem then it would give you a prominent x descent okay or 
and uh, or absent x descent like in tamponade there would be the in uh, uh, abnormality with the la uh, uh, ra emptying in the rv it will give you the uh, blunt x descents why because atria is not relaxed properly that's why it will it will give you the uh, a blunted x descents okay now the 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 c way and the, there are the two x descents actually number 1 is x and number 2 is x x prime why because when atria relaxes during the relaxation of atria the close the, there would be a closure of the tricuspid valve and the ventricular contraction at downwards in the ventricle it gives a turbulence it gives a, a wave and pressure wave which describe as a c wave during the vent atrial relaxation that's why in between the atrial relaxation there would be a wave which is called as c wave which is called as c wave and the portion before it uh, uh, like closure of the tricuspid valve is called is as a, uh, the, the 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 like the portion of atrial relaxation which comes before the uh, closure of tricuspid valve called as x and after the closure of the tricuspid valve uh, the uh, the period of atrial relaxation is 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 nominates or is uh, uh, is is called as x prime now what is the v the v wave is again the filling of the atria and in the during the early diastole okay is the filling of the atria when when there would be the, the obviously the tricuspid valve is closed and blood is coming blood is coming from this uh, svc and uh, ivc so ra would be filled and it will give you a wave that is the v wave and it shows that your atria are filled with the blood okay and if there would be a regurgitation during tr or if the blood would be coming from rv to ra in the in the late diastole it would give you a large v waves so large v waves on jvp shows that there is the tr and if there would be the large v waves on the pulmonary capillary wave pressure it shows that your patient has mr and then y descent what is the y <coughs> descent then again after this when there would be the opening of the tricuspid valve it will give you the uh, like emptying of ra into the rv it will give you the y descent and if this y descent would be prominent it shows that your patient has the constrictive pericarditis why because in the constrictive pericarditis rv always remains active to get the blood and initial it will take the blood and then it will ceases to take the blood that's why you will get the prominent descent of a prominent y descent okay so why i am discussing here the jvp waves because these are the waves which you can get on by placing your catheter in the ra and this is the these are um, the waves which you get on uh, placing your catheter in the ra would are the more prominent are the uh, like very visible than those waves who are uh, uh, for for which you will be looking uh, for the jv uh, in the jvp because in the jvp these waves are not that much clear but these waves are very much clear in the right heart cath so here we have completed about the right heart cath and the basics of the right heart cath in the in the next lecture we will discuss about the hemodynamic problems then the different hemo uh, problems in uh, the uh, interpretation of the right heart cath actually in different uh, diseases in different abnormalities in the different conditions like how you will get the hemodynamics in the cardiac tamponade in constrictive pericarditis in pulmonary embolism or in cardiogenic shock and septic shock and distributive shock and shunt so we will discuss how to interpret the right heart cath in our next lecture thank you subscribe my channel and share the the knowledge with your peers and with your friend as much as you can allah hafiz take care